Quantum physics is the latest achievement in modern physics. What is quantum physics? Is it different from classical physics? Quantum. Quantum is a Latin word correlated with quantity and quanta is the smallest amount of any physical entity. So, it is the physics which studies about the material at most minimal scale to understand how particle works and interact with each other. It underlines how atoms work and why chemistry and biology work as they do. So, quantum physics is often described as science that explains everything. But, the problem is in classical physics. What we realized in daily life and quantum physics have no real or nothing common in day-to-day -day life. So, quantum physics sound different and difficult to the people who are not directly involved in science. However, we know that mathematics have no objection and physics has no space of doubt. And with this mindset, we cannot understand quantum physics. So, if we want to understand the topic, then we have to ignore what we learned before and prepare our mind to embrace probability and paradox. According to Newton's first law of motion, an object should have a definite position and momentum at all times. But, according to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, one subatomic particle as an electron doesn't have a well-defined position or momentum. A classical object have definite mass, but an electron have a variable and not well-defined mass. In the classical theory, object have a definite velocity but electron have no definite velocity. They have a probability of various location in space at same time. In quantum mechanics, the property of an object are represented by mathematical object called wave function. The uncertainty principle implies that even if you know the components of a particle wave function, Still, you don't know its location and momentum with complete accuracy. The position and momentum are not determined until it is observed. Some of the core features of quantum physics are number 1. Atoms, electrons, protons are not actually particles, but they are quanta of various things like mass, energy, etc. In fact, matter exists in small indivisible packets called quanta. Number 2. In quantum physical world, it is different from our everyday world. It is a strange universe where particle can stay in two or more places at the same time. Particle can disappear and reappear in a new place without having traveled there in between. Number 3. Nothing can happen in quantum world unless somebody or something observed it. Or, in other words, even if an event occurred, say a photon emitted from an atom will not happen until there is an observer present to measure the event. Number four, time is not a constant quantity in quantum physical world, but it comes in discrete jumps. For example, one second can be equal to one hour in quantum time. Number five, there is such a thing as negative energy in quantum physical world, which have same magnitude as positive energy. 
and the negative energy must be added to the positive energy to get zero, which fundamental law called conservation of energy. Classical physicists often characterize properties of a particle as intrinsic or extrinsic. Intrinsic properties do not depend on the particle's location, do not evolve with time, and are not influenced by its physical environment, such as mass and charge are intrinsic properties. Extrinsic properties, on the other hand, evolve with time in response to the forces acting on the particle such as position and momentum are extrinsic properties. Here is Erwin Schrodinger on this most non-classical feature of the theory. It is better to regard a particle not as a permanent entity, but as an instantaneous event. Sometimes, these events form chains that give the illusion of permanent beings. But only in particular circumstances and only for any extremely short period of time in every single case. Quantum physics is a harsh taskmaster. That is, quantum physicists are not allowed to infer facts about a system unless these facts can be verified by experiment. This is a severe limitation. For example, it prohibits us from ascribing an orbit or a path to a particle because measurements of position are necessarily performed at discrete times. Even if we measure the position of a particle at two times, T1, and T2, we cannot even make the simple inference that it traveled from T1 to T2 via a path in ordinary geometric space. We can only say that we found it at T1 and then at T2. We cannot talk as we will see about it being in between at any time unless we can measure it to be there at those times. If you cannot explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Albert Einstein Let's understand quantum physics more simply and briefly. An atom is the basic building block of chemistry. It is the smallest unit into which matter can be divided without the release of electrically charged particles. All atoms are roughly the same size, whether they have 1 or 90 electrons. Approximately 50 million atoms of solid matter lined up in a row would measure 1 centimeter or 0.4 inch. A convenient unit of length for measuring atomic sizes is the angstrom, defined as 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter. The radius of an atom measures 1 to 2 angstrom. The nucleus is in the center which is extremely small and dense part of an atom and is surrounded by electrons. It is in the same proportion to the atom as a marble is to a football field. In volume, the nucleus takes up only 10 raised to the power minus 14 meters of the space in the atom. It implies one part in 100,000. Let us understand nucleus. A nucleus composed of protons, which have a positive charge, and neutrons, which have no charge. Protons. The word proton is Greek for first, and this name was given to the hydrogen nucleus by Ernest Rutherford in 1920. Although protons were originally considered to be elementary particles 
in the modern standard of particle physics, protons are now known to be composite particles containing three valence quarks. Because protons are composed of two up quarks and one down quark. The rest masses of quarks contribute only about 1% of a proton's mass. The remainder of a proton's mass is due to quantum chromodynamics binding energy, which includes the kinetic energy of the quarks and the energy of the gluon field that binds the quarks together. Neutrons Neutrons are tiny subatomic particles that, along with protons, form the nucleus of an atom. Neutrons contain one up quark and two down quarks. The nucleus is held together by the strong nuclear force, which is one of four fundamental forces. But what is quark? A quark is elementary particle which is fundamental constituent of matter. To understand quark properly, we have to understand particle physics. Particle physics or high energy physics is the study of fundamental particles and forces that constitute matter and radiation. The fundamental particles in the universe are classified in the modern standard model as fermions or matter particles and bosons or force carrying particles. There are three generations of fermions, but ordinary matter is made only from the first fermion generation. The first generation consists of up and down quarks which form protons and neutrons and electrons and electron neutrinos. The three fundamental interactions known to be mediated by bosons are electromagnetism, the weak interaction and the strong interaction. Quarks cannot exist on their own but form hadrons. Two baryons, the proton and the neutron, make up most of the mass of ordinary matter. Mesons are unstable and the longest lifts last for only a few hundredths of a microsecond. They occur after collisions between particles made of quarks, such as fast-moving protons and neutrons in cosmic rays. Mesons are also produced in cyclotrons or other particle accelerators. Particles have corresponding antiparticles with the same mass but with opposite electric charges. For example, the antiparticle of the electron is the positron, also known as an anti-electron. The electron has a negative electric charge the positron has a positive charge. These antiparticles can theoretically form a corresponding form of matter called antimatter. Some particles, such as the photon, are their own antiparticle. The dominant theory explaining these fundamental particles and fields, along with their dynamics, is called the standard model. The reconciliation of gravity to the current particle physics theory is not solved. Many theories have addressed this problem, such as loop quantum gravity, string theory, and supersymmetry theory. If you want to understand how your transistor works or how your compact display works, at that time, you cannot use classical physics. Newton's mechanics and Maxwell's electromagnetic theory helps us to understand a wide range of macroscopic phenomena such as the billiard balls and rocket. But the same theory fails drastically when it is applied in the microscopic phenomena such as the proton atom scattering and the flow of electrons in semiconductors.
We think what we understand in the macro world makes sense. But when we use the same ideas and the same theories in the micro world, it doesn't work. An understanding of such micro processes requires a completely new way of thinking, namely quantum physics. Quantum physics is the study of matter and energy at the most fundamental level. It aims to reveal the properties and nature of every building block of nature. And it is truly one of the two understandings of modern science like general relativity. When this history of human life origin will be written, at that time, the main event will be the first invisible contact of humans to the invisible quantum world and the subsequent biological and computer revolutions. Because in present technology, the applications of quantum mechanics are used for quantum computing, quantum optics, quantum chemistry, superconducting magnets, LED, optical amplifier, laser, transistor and semiconductor such as microprocessor, medical and research imaging such as MRI and electron microscopy, mobile, modern electronic system, computer and telecommunication. Not only that, the explanation of many physical and biological phenomena are rooted in the nature of chemical bonds. Most notably, the macromolecule use of quantum biology to understand DNA. Similarly, it has also given us the insights to understand various biological systems such as smell receptors and protein structures. Recent work on photosynthesis has given us some evidence that the quantum correlations play an important and essential role in the fundamental processes of plants and many other organisms. A working mechanism of resonant tunneling diode uses this phenomena called as quantum tunneling through potential barriers. Many scientists are currently seeking robust methods to manipulate quantum states, which will theoretically allow the guaranteed secure transmission of information. The bit state would no longer be in a superposition. It is almost more than a hundred years since we first understood quantum physics. In this period, Physicists tried to explain quantum physics to the non-physicist, but they failed in their attempt. As we always experience the macro world and we live in this macro world, that's why the micro world or the quantum world is profoundly mysterious for us. But the quantum world gives us some very important messages about the nature of reality and the limits of science that everybody needs to understand. Nobel laureate Richard Feynman supposedly said, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics. If someone claims that they understand quantum physics, then they're either lying or they're crazy. In part two, we'll understand the laws of quantum physics. Till now, bye.